Market capitalism is a natural way that people do business. I want something, you have it, I pay you for it. I have an idea, maybe I want to develop it out of altruism, but more times than not, I want to develop it because maybe I can hit it rich. Anyway, I'm going to use Robert Reich as a foil. He puts out these very well produced, great graphics, propaganda films. And every now and then we need to dip into the, the gene pool of the left and confront what they're doing. And this is one of those times. Go. Here are five totally made up crises Republicans have invented to distract from the real crises facing Americans today. The growing concentration of wealth, the worsening climate crisis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The growing concentration of wealth. I'm tired of this Marxist claptrap with class warfare. Let's say there's a concentration of wealth. Why do I care? You see, according to the Marxists, excuse me, the democratic socialists, there's only one pie. And the more somebody takes out of that pie, the less pie you have to eat. That's not how market capitalism works. Our economy is much bigger today than it was 20 years ago. It's much bigger today than it was 50 years ago. 50 years, it was much bigger than it was 100 years ago. It's called economic growth under capitalism. The pie gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, except when? Except when these masterminds, Bernie Sanders, Biden, Reich, jump in, and they try and decide who will and who will not succeed. What kind of vehicles you're going to build? What kind of an economy you're going to have? Who gets to make the decisions? And so predictability becomes a problem. Unexpected consequences become a problem. Expected consequences become a problem. So the more the government rules over the economy, the harder it is for the economy to grow. And sometimes it begins to shrink. But when he talks about the concentration of wealth, why do we care? What we care about is growth and prosperity. Well, all of us have an, an ability, an opportunity to access it. It doesn't matter how much money Elon Musk has. It doesn't matter how much money the top billionaires in the world have. It's irrelevant. It's class warfare. It's jealousy. What do they do with this money? What does Elon Musk do with his money? Does he sit in a home with stacks of cash and just look at me. I'm the richest man in the world. No. What does he do with it? He pours it back into the economy. He starts an automobile company, whether you like the automobile or not. He buys Twitter, calls it X, pours all kinds of money into that, losing proposition. He invests in other activities and so forth. Billionaires don't sit on their money. Look at me. I'm worth $30 billion. They reinvest it in the economy. Even billionaires we cannot stand. It's when they take some of that money and give it to government to attack us or create these charitable nonprofit groups, these front groups, to push a radical left agenda, that's when it really matters. But otherwise, who cares? They build more factories, they hire more people, they invent different things. Who cares? Oh, the concentration of wealth. And they act like there's no middle class in this country. We have a massive middle class in this country. Why? Because the government dictated it? No. Because the Industrial Revolution. What was the Industrial Revolution? It was the greatest period of economic growth mankind has ever experienced in the history of mankind. Right here in America, turned us into a superpower. And ever since, the Marxists, the Democrats have done everything they can to cripple it. They hate capitalism. And so they talk like Marxists. Class warfare. They want us at each other's throats. They want us jealous of each other. Why do I care if there's a guy down the street who's worth $500 billion? As long as that individual isn't stealing from me, as long as he's not taking money out of the economy and just burning it, it has no effect on me whatsoever. If he has $500 billion, that doesn't mean I'm going to lose $10,000, $50,000, and lose my job. It's irrelevant. Let's say he takes that $500 billion. I'm giving you a radical example. Nobody's worth $500 billion. Let's say they take that $500 billion. They reinvest it in the economy. They start a car company. They buy and capitalize an oil company. 
They buy land and develop it for homes and so forth. In other words, it's not sitting there stagnant. Well, let's pretend they put it all in a bank. Mark's bank, let's hope, but Mark's bank. Well, what do I do when they put it in my bank? I give them interest. Well, why do I give them interest? I mean, how do I make enough money from that money to give them interest on their money? Because I take that money and what do I do with it? I give loans, car loans, mortgages, commercial loans so they can build things out there, developer loans so they can build things out there. It doesn't sit there stagnantly. That's the problem with top-down government control of the economy. They don't know what's needed in one corner of the earth or another. They don't know what your county wants or what you want or some developer wants. Dispersed decision making. This is the funny thing. They talk about the centralization of wealth, but they don't talk about the centralization of government that has control over more wealth than any other entity on the face of the earth. They don't want the dispersion of decision making, diversity of decision making. And that's what makes an economy strong. Why? Because no one bureaucracy, no one department, no one ideology that's based on the centralization and redistribution of wealth can possibly have the knowledge necessary to make those decisions. And you see it in one autocracy after another where people get poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. That's why market capitalism is the best. So the issue isn't the centralization of wealth. Well, the top 1% get this and the bottom one, who cares? You realize, America, that our bottom 5% would be the middle class in 90% of the world? You realize that our bottom 5% eats better than the vast majority of people on the face of the earth? How is that possible? because of the vibrancy of the American economy. But the government can do grave damage. It's doing it right now. The massive middle class, as we call ourselves, working people, as we call ourselves, the concentration of wealth in the private sector is irrelevant. But the concentration of wealth in the government is very relevant. And that's the alternative that they create it doesn't need to be, but they created. And what has it caused? Economic dislocation, massive inflation, the destruction of the supply chain, has a direct impact on your lifestyle, on your ability to take care of yourself and your family, on the cost of an automobile, on the cost of fueling an automobile, on the cost of purchasing food, on the cost of your utilities, electricity, gas, oil, and so forth. Some parts of the country already, particularly in very blue states that embrace this ideology, you have brownouts, you have blackouts. You have shortages of food. That wouldn't be the case if the government were out of the way and the economic system were permitted to function as the economic system. Here's the thing. Marxism, democratic socialism, whatever you want to call it, on the economic aspect of it, that is a man-made system, that is man-made ideology trying to impose its will on the economy. Market capitalism is a natural way that people do business. I want something, you have it, I pay you for it. I have an idea, maybe I want to develop it out of altruism, but more times than not I want to develop it because maybe I can hit it rich and make a big difference. So I look and I find ways to improve things. I look for gaps and I try to address that. Or maybe I create something frivolous that people like. It doesn't matter. Market capitalism is a natural outcome from thousands of years of human experience. Government control of economic decisions is government control of the individual and the individual's lifestyle and their possibility of success or failure. And you have no input or impact when the government makes these decisions. Those decisions are too high up, too many levels of bureaucracy. Elections don't change it. Our system has been set up from the Declaration to the Constitution to its embrace in market capitalism 
to create the most prosperous nation on the face of the earth, to protect your labor, your intellectual and physical labor. You spend most of your life, I want you to think about this, working. Most of what's left of your awakened hours, you spend consuming. You produce and you consume when you're not sleeping. The government steps in and says, I will decide how you produce, I will decide how much you can consume. That destroys the whole balance of the system because the government has no idea, no way of knowing how you as an individual, as I have an individual, anybody here as an individual, will produce or consume. But it's telling you how they want you to produce and how much they want you to consume. That's destructive of an economic system that's building prosperity and it's expanding. And they use the Marxist ideology that look at all the concentration of wealth. The greatest concentration of wealth is that which is seized by the federal government through taxation and regulation. That is through direct confiscation and through backdoor confiscation by controlling what you can or cannot do, what you can or cannot buy, and so forth and so on. And who are these masterminds? What makes them so smart? They're not smart. Just because somebody gets elected to office doesn't mean they know how to run the world. Most of them are idiots. Or the bureaucracy. They have a civil service. They have a union. You can't fire anybody. You don't know their names. None of what they do is based on productivity. Very little of it's based on merit. These are the masterminds. These are the people who are going to rejigger society. But when you read their ideologies, when you read Marx, when you read Hegel, when you read Rousseau, to me those are the three bigs when it comes to a centralized dictatorship and autocracy. Marx was just the latest of the three, really. They don't care about the individual. The individual is supposed to sacrifice for the general good, for the communal, that is the community. And they say the individual can only self-realize, their word, self-realize their true independence, their true capabilities if they're part of the whole. Now you know how much BS that is. Part of what whole? Somebody's got to make these decisions. You know, it's funny in a sick way. After the Russian Revolution, where about 30% of the people in Russia rose up and overthrew the rest of them. And that's the way most of these revolutions work. Lenin said, and I paraphrase, okay, Marx tells us how to destroy the status quo society, but he doesn't tell us how to govern what's left. In other words, he tells you in these broad, ambiguous concepts, materialism and all the rest, about the bourgeoisie, about the proletariat, and he has this ridiculous, really, ending to his theory where he talks about eventually the proletariat will throw off all the rest of these classes, particularly the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie would be like the landlord or the, uh, or the manager or the property owner. They would throw them off, and then the people would come together, and they'd work for the general good. Okay, well, who's in charge of this general good? We don't know. Well, how are we going to prevent evil people from taking over this general good? You're not. In fact, Marx says there's going to be a period of despotism. That's his phrase, period of despotism. In other words, period of French Revolution where they slaughter everybody who doesn't agree with them. But that period of despotism under, under Marxism never ends. It's ongoing because it's an unnatural ideology to try and change the nature of human beings. But whether it's Marxism in an aggressive form or Marxism light, which is preached by the likes of Robert Reich, and the Democrat Party, and all the rest of them, it still has the same foundation. It rejects you as an individual. It rejects you and your free will. It rejects you and what you want to accomplish, how you want to succeed, the mistakes you might make, and so forth. You need to follow the leader, and the leader being the government. For more, sign up for Levin TV.